Hello and welcome to the third in this series of uh, sports podcasts with The Score. So this morning we're going to be talking about all the usual sporting events that happened. Of course, PE played again at the weekend, a draw away from home, more, more away day misery for the Lily White. Also this weekend we had the Grasshoppers fall at the Den against Leicester. PE women played and of course this week a very special event going on, Sir Tom Finney Day on Thursday. Um, we'll get round to that in a sec, but we'll start as we always do with PE. Jamie Rentham's covering that for us. Jamie, how did it go? I think you uh, you hit the nail on the head there with your intro. It was another you know poor away day uh, for Alan Irvin's men. Uh, PNE probably started the better of the, the two sides really. Um, you know it turned out quite even at the end. Both sides had uh, six shots on target, and both sides had seven shots off target. So, I mean, it, there wasn't much to, to separate the two teams, and I think that showed with the uh, with the nil-nil scoreline in the end. Um, PNE were well hit hit at the start of the game really with the the absence of captain Paul McKenna. Um, it, was, it was quite a shock shock absence really. He uh, had a dead leg um, in training the day before the travel down to uh, to, to South uh, South London. So Alan Irvin was hit by hit by that. Chris Cedric, uh, who, who you know played uh, usually plays on the right, but he was shifted into the centre to cover for Paul McKenna, and um, and 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 Callum Davidson expected to return, but but was still not fit. So I mean, uh, again, PNE's injury worries continue, and and that was reflected in the game, and it, it turned into a bit of a dour nil 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 result. Listening to the game myself, it sounded a bit of a stinker, to be honest. This is a bottom of the league side that are really struggling, and yet P and E can't seem to close these teams. What what's the problem? I think from Charlton's point of view, they they had absolutely nothing to lose. Really, um, the, the season's over uh, for them. They they all appreciate that they're going to be playing in League One next year. But yeah, you know, having having said that, um, they they were up for the fight. They've got nothing left to lose. Um, it, you know, they, they they were desperate to to get a result, um, just to to give the fans something to shout about, really. And and Paul Parkinson's men just went out there and, and tried to play and you know, they had quite a quite a lot of creative stuff going on later on towards towards the end of the game and if anything Charlton were more likely to nick it at the end. 17-year-old John Joe Shelby was was quite lively for Charlton, along with uh, Zeng Zeng Ji, who um, Alan Irvin had uh, pinpointed before the game as the man that was likely to cause cause some problems for for PE and and they did do late on and like I say Charlton were more likely to nip it at the end or nick nick the win at the end than than PE who just just didn't really turn up for the game. Of course, playoffs are very topical every week now, but it just seems that to be drifting away slightly. Burnley winning at the weekend, Sheffield United winning against Cardiff. Now there's there's a sort of gap opening up between Preston and sixth place. You know, are we staring at another another season of Championship football? I think it's looking that way at the moment. I think the, the you know the, obviously Cardiff and and Burnley and Sheffield United all ahead of them have games in hand. Um, Preston are seventh uh, at the moment, as, as you said, and um, with 61 points, they're two points adrift of, of of the guys above them. But as I say, they've both got games in hand, or they've all got games in hand. So uh, you know it's going to be a seriously tough tough kind of run in. I think Alan Alan, Alan Evans' men have, are going to have to win at least five of the six games they've got left to really stand a chance to of, of actually you know making the playoffs. But having said that, it's it's a incredibly tight league as everyone all the managers keep telling us, and anything can happen. So I think they're they're still in with a shot, but you know the, the way things are looking now, they've got a lot to do if they're going to if they're going to make the playoffs by the end of the season. Okay, we've got an international break. Coming up now, no game this weekend, of course. Do you think that's going to work in Preston's favour? I think it's the perfect time, actually. Um, I think Irvin said it in, in his post-match um, quotes after after the game. Uh, you know, he, he was uh, saying that it was the perfect time to get players like Callum Davidson back. Obviously, Paul McKenna, a bit of a freak freak injury um, with with a dead leg, but you know he'll be fresh for for the for the game when they finally do come back after the break. And, and obviously, you've got the others that are, that have been out for a while that that. Potentially, well, obviously you're not gonna you're not gonna have Barry Nicholson um, back, but having said that, you never know about uh, Richard Chaplow in the centre. He could he could make a return. I don't know whether his hamstring is gonna see him out for the for the rest of the season, but yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, there's players like like definitely Callum Davidson and Paul McKenna that are gonna come back fresh, um, and and hopefully the, the break will do Preston good. Um, I think it's it's what they really need right now after. a a run of, um, of of constant games, really, with a much depleted squad. On the bench this weekend, there was a spot for um, PE youth player Adam Barton um, due to all the injuries, of course. I know James Bromfield watches a lot of the PE youth games for us. James, uh, did he uh, deserve his place on the bench this weekend? I think so. He showed uh, a different level of class in the youth games, and uh, Jamie Hoyland's hinted that he's on the brink of a first team call up, as you say, especially with the injuries. So it's no real surprise that, that he's found his way onto the bench. I'm sure that. Due to the injuries, it was the case, but I think that he's got a little more behind his game than to just get on for that cause. 
I th- yeah, I think he was definitely worthy of his position on the bench. OK, well, that's uh, promising to see for the, youth, for the youth team, of course. Also this weekend, uh, the women played uh, on Sunday afternoon. Tim Corby was there. How did it go, Tim? It was a 4-3 win in the end for Preston women's. They did their very best to throw it away in the last five minutes. They were seemingly coasting to a three nil, comfortable 3-0 win. Two strange penalty decisions and some bad defending gifted Sheffield Wednesday three goals uh, and it seemed like they might find a way back into the game that they scarcely deserved really. Preston had dominated for the majority of the game and Wednesday had offered little. They had set up very defensively with only one up front and caused Preston no problems whatsoever really in the f- for the first 60 minutes. Hannah Bailey had a good game. She was playing left midfield and may- making breaks forward and causing the Wednesday defence a lot of problems and Preston fully deserved their win in the end. OK, we're nearing the end of the season, of course. Has it been a good year for them? They've struggled at times, but I think there have been a few good performances here and there, so hopefully they can build on that next year and uh, maybe push for the, towards the top of the table. OK, thanks, Tim. Um, we're going to change the sport now and we're going to move on to rugby. Preston Grasshoppers were away at, at Leicester Lions. Uh, Jim Headley was was reporting that for us. Disappointment again for the Grasshoppers. Yeah, it was typical away performance by the Grasshoppers, really. They seemed to really struggle away from home. The final score was 49-32 to the Lions, but could have could have been a lot, lot worse. At half-time, they were trailing 42-6, with just two penalties to show for the Grasshoppers. So the fact that they managed to get it back to 49-32 in the second half shows that they did all right. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of injuries similar to to the Preston North End team for the Grasshoppers at the moment. How do they cope with that at the weekend? Uh, well, they're struggling again, really. This, at the moment, there seems to be a lot of uh, young players in the team, and they seem to be doing quite well. Uh, they started with uh, Tom Brady and uh, Alex Savalas Roebuck, and they they both did well in the backs for the Grasshoppers. They both scored tries, and they both seem to impress. Got a couple of big games coming up. There's a league game against Fylde and then, of course, the, the Lancashire Cup final against Fylde a couple of weeks later. How do you see those go- those games going? Fylde are a very good team, so it's going to be a very tight final, I'd have thought. There's obviously a lot of local rivalry, so it's probably going to be a tight, uh, well-contested game. But they haven't really got much to play for in the, in the league this season, so it might be a case of resting a few players and concentrating on the cup final now. OK, well, similar sort of question to the uh, to the e women. Do you think this has been a good season for the Grasshoppers? I think they've done OK. They're uh, they're about sixth or seventh in the league, so they're not really going to go up, but they're not but they're not going to go down. I think they just need consistency. Really, they seem to be pretty good at home, but whenever they go away, they seem to lose. So they just need that bit more extra consistency next season. I think overall, it's it's quite a poor league, and it's crying out for someone to take hold of it. So next season, they get maybe a few new players in, they might be able to take the league by storm. Okay, uh, thanks, James, for covering that for us and offering a little bit of insight into that game. We're going to move on to the big event happening in Preston this week, Sir Tom Finney Day. Plenty of events and celebrations planned in the city. Thursday and over the weekend, there's going to be an exhibition at the National Football Museum, a big gala dinner on Thursday night. Let's just sort of get some opinion on what, what we think of the day. Jamie, if I'll start with you. Is this sort of is this day deserved? Oh, obviously, very much deserved. Yep, he's a uh, he's a hero to Preston, uh, Tom Finney. Uh, we, we did, you know, we, we spoke to some fans a while ago, and and they were just saying how he you know he means everything to Preston. He's he's he is Preston is is the general consensus from people around Preston from the public. Um, you know, he, he's a man that everybody knows about. The young kids are taught about um, when when they go to games. As, as soon as they're they may you know they become Preston fans, they know about Tom Finney, um, and he's a you know he's he's a legend in these parts, and I think he he truly deserves the the recognition um, that it, that he's getting through this day. Um, you know he was he was he was an incredible player. He's been compared to to to, to well as a modern day great. He's been compared to George Best um, and Stanley Matthews. Uh, you know back in the day, but to to many people there's there's never been anyone better than Tom Finney. He he was you know the ultimate footballer. Um, he could use both feet. He could run all day. He could uh, you know he he came up with an array of tricks and fancy fancy footwork and. He scored goals more than anything, um, and I think he's a, he's a genuine hero in these parts. What do you think Tom Finney means to this city? I think Tom Finney is one of the most uh, famous things about this about Preston, so uh, I think it's justified to have its own day. OK, we're all looking forward to that this week, of course. Another weekend of, of action coming up for you next weekend. We'll be back again. Hope you can join us.